If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. We know from the work kinetic energy theorem that the work done on the object is going to equal the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. The question notes that this block is initially at rest, which means that the initial kinetic energy will actually be zero. So we can eliminate that from the equation. So we basically have the work equaling the final kinetic energy. Now, if we look at the question, we can see that we have something called a variable force. The reason we call it a variable force is because it's changing. The value of this force depends on the value of x. For a variable force, we know that the work done is equal to an integral from an initial position to a final position of whatever that variable force is, and then we integrate with respect to x. So for a variable force, we have to use this expression for the work. We're going to take that integral and plug it in for the work over in this equation that we had developed a moment ago. The next thing we could do is actually substitute f of x with the equation that's given in the question, this 2.5 minus x squared. So let's go ahead and do that next. Now we note that for x sub i, which is the initial position, that is given to us as 0. And then the final position is mentioned in part A of the question. That's going to be 2. So now what we have to do is actually integrate this expression using our knowledge of calculus. And so for this constant, 2.5, if we integrate that with respect to x, we get 2.5x. And then for the variable, what we have to do is add 1 to the exponent so that it becomes x to the power of 3, and then divide by that new exponent, which is, again, 3. And then we're going to evaluate that integral from 0 to 2 meters. This is going to equal our final kinetic energy. Through the properties of integrals, we could plug in the upper limit first in for x. So we're going to have 2.5 times 2 minus 2 cubed all over 3. And we're going to have that quantity. And then we have to subtract the value we get by plugging in the lower limit, which is 0. Now, of course, if we plug 0 in for x, this becomes 0, as does this. So we're really just subtracting 0, so it's negligible. We could then pick up our calculators and type this in to get the final kinetic energy. And when we do that, we get a value of 2.3. And since we use standard units, the answer will come out in standard units, which is joules for kinetic energy. So this is the final kinetic energy and the correct answer to part A of the question. Now we can move on to part B, but before doing so, let's just summarize the results that we had found. We had found in part A that the final kinetic energy is going to equal the integral from 0 to 2 of our force function, which was 2.5 minus x squared with respect to x. In part b, we're looking for the maximum value of the kinetic energy. Now, from calculus, we know if we're trying to maximize a value, we have to compute the derivative of its function. So we have the kinetic energy here as a function of this integral over here. What we're going to do is take the derivative of both sides of this equation. Now, if we take the derivative of the left-hand side, we can just use this notation. So we're just taking the derivative of the kinetic energy with respect to x. And then we have to take the derivative of this integral with respect to x. Now, basically, the derivative of an integral cancels the integral. And so we're actually left with, on the right-hand side, just the 2.5 minus x squared. And so once we have that derivative, Cal calculus instructs us to set that derivative equal to 0. That's how we find the maximum or minimum value. So we can now add x squared over to the right-hand side and then take the square root. And so we can see that when x is equal to the square root of 2.5, we will have our maximum kinetic energy. Now, the square root of 2.5 is approximately 1.58 meters, and that does indeed lie between 0 and 2. Now, this is not the answer, of course. They didn't want to know the actual position when the kinetic energy is a maximum. They wanted to know the actual kinetic energy. So we actually need to back up and reevaluate the integral. Of course, notice that this time our final x value is the 1.58 that we just determined because that's where the kinetic energy will have its maximum value. So we've already integrated this before. We had gotten 2.5x minus x cubed over 3, and then we're going to evaluate it from 0 to this new x value of 1.58. As before, we'll plug in the upper limit first, which is 
the 1.58. And then we technically have to plug in the lower limit next, which is 0. But like we said earlier, when we plug in 0, that entire quantity just becomes 0. So we can pick up our calculators and now type this in. And when we do that, we get a value of about 2.6 joules. So this would be the correct answer for the maximum kinetic energy between 0 and 2 meters.